Now building AI agents and prompting for them is very different to writing prompts in ChatGPT. Now in this video, I'm gonna unpack exactly what those differences are, and I'm gonna share my formula, Rock to Talk, which is gonna help you build powerful and effective agents every single time. Now don't worry, this channel is built for non-technical people. So if you're not an engineer, you should still be able to build AI agents. And if you are new to the channel, my name is Alfie Marsh. I'm the co-founder and CEO of an AI startup called Toolflow AI. We're literally building the platform that helps you build AI agents and automations without a single line of code. Not only do we have a platform where you can build your own agents and automations, we also can build custom solutions for your business. So if you know that you need to adopt AI, but you don't know where to start, then click on the link in the description below where we offer workshops for your employees and can also build custom agents and automations for you. Now, with that being said, let's get into the video. Now, before getting into the secret formula for writing effective prompts for AI agents, we do need to understand that there is a difference between prompting ChatGPT and other chat interfaces for that matter, whether it's Gemini, Claude, Grok, or you name it, it doesn't matter. But chat interface prompting is very, very different compared to building for AI agents. Now, in a chat interface, we have this kind of back and forward conversation. So when I go over to ChatGPT, I can say, you know, write me a poem about AI agents and the future of mankind. So this is me basically speaking with a large language model through the chat interface. The response is based off of all the training data of the models behind the scenes and ChatGPT here is giving me an answer. Now what's really beautiful about these chat interfaces is they are a conversation so I can iterate and go back and forward. So I can say okay rewrite a French version. And so I'm gonna go and tweak it until I get the output that I want. So this is really good. I can go back and forward and iterate. So that basically means that you don't need to have everything upfront perfectly written out. Now, when we're working with AI agents, it works in a bit of a different way because we're not actually asking directly a language model to solve the problem for us. AI agents work slightly differently. So with these chat interfaces, we basically send a query, which then queries a large language model, could be ChatGPT, could be Claude by Anthropic, it really doesn't matter. And then we get a response. Now, when we work with AI agents, on the other hand, we still query something and we get a response, but we're querying the agent. Now, the agent is not just a large language model. It does use a language model to understand the user's kind of intent or the goal, but we can actually train it to perform a certain task, almost like giving it a job title. We can hire an AI agent to perform some high level goals or tasks. Now, that agent can then use tools to solve those problems. So we might give them access to things like Gmail, Slack, HubSpot, whatever it may be, and it can then figure out how to use those tools to solve the problem and give you a response. We can also input other knowledge that isn't included in the training data. So a good example would be if you grew up and you didn't learn to speak French, you wouldn't know how to respond in French. Likewise, if these training models aren't trained on, your, say, your customer's data and the conversation history that you might have with them, you can't really ask many questions about your customer because it wasn't trained in that data. It wasn't grounded in that knowledge. So we can also give agents additional knowledge that it can use. So this unique dynamic of an agent means the way we prompt it and the way we work with it and build them is very, very different to just prompting in ChatGPT. So let me jump into Toolflow AI and give you an example of an actual agent so you can see how it works. Now I've built a couple of agents here. I'm going to use this content repurposing agent. Now this particular agent generates blog posts, LinkedIn posts, and Twitter threads from long form content. So in this example, what I want to do is go over to YouTube and I'm gonna take um, one of these videos and I wanna turn it into a bunch of LinkedIn posts. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the link from this video come back to the agent and I can just ask it a question, for example, like, hey, how can you help me? Okay, so I ask, how can you help me? And it explains that it can repurpose long form content and turn it into Twitter threads and such. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just share this uh, YouTube video and I'm gonna say, uh, make me a LinkedIn post. Now notice I'm doing a very generic prompt here. I'm not giving it details on how to write the post. I'm not telling it which tools to use. Uh, and it's coming back with some response and it's saying, can you provide me with some additional context? So this is a video. Um, I'm not the guest nor the host. I just found the insights useful. 
So what's going to happen is this agent is going to think, okay, I've been trained to perform a task and I've been given access to tools in order to solve that task. And it's figured out that it basically needs to use the YouTube transcript extractor as the first tool because I've given it a link and it now needs to get the transcript before it can actually use that transcript to write a blog post. So right now it's actually thinking and then using an external tool. Okay, so it looks like it's got the transcript now and it's going on to the next tool which it has access to, which is the viral LinkedIn post and Twitter thread generator. So both of these tools have actually built on Toolflow AI. So you can do all of that with no code. So Toolflow AI is really good because we can basically create tools and we can give those tools to agents to use. And it's this no code ecosystem in which to create them. But uh, I'll go into those tools in just a second. So what it's doing now is it's taking that transcript and then it's putting it through to the next tool and then using a predefined formula there to create the LinkedIn posts. Okay, and now we start having the LinkedIn post being written for us. So I'm gonna let this um, complete and then we're gonna go and look at the output of these tools. Okay, so we have one LinkedIn post here and so I know that's gonna give me some more. What about the... Uh, other LinkedIn posts, I'd like multiple. So it's thinking and it started to write straight away. So it hasn't used another tool. Uh, and I'm gonna show you why, because it's basically pulled out multiple LinkedIn posts from that previous tool. Okay, great. So I've got my LinkedIn post here. Now I wanna come back up to the top and show you what's happened. So this agent has access to a few tools and I'm gonna show you behind the scenes in just a second. It has figured out that the input to this tool is a YouTube URL and it's taken the URL that was given in the chat. It's then taken that input, it's run the tool, and it's created an output. And the output in this case is a YouTube transcript. And so this is the whole transcript from that podcast. That's great. In the next tool, the inputs to this tool are basically given some source material. So the transcript and the details of the podcast. And then the output of this tool are basically some hooks, which we don't actually see in the agent chat itself. Um, and then it's given the Twitter thread, which we haven't actually asked for yet, and then the LinkedIn posts. And basically, once this tool has been run, the agent is then gonna figure out, okay, I've got these outputs from these tools. What does the user want me to show? Uh, and so it's then given me that first LinkedIn post. And notice I didn't ask for multiple posts, even though it had it from the tool. So I had to ask again, give me the rest of the posts. So this is an example of how an agent works. So we've seen how an AI agent actually works. Now we need to know how to build it properly. And to do that, we need to know how to use an effective prompt. So basically an AI agent is really choosing in a language model for it to run on. We then need to give it some system instructions and this is where the prompt is really, really important and what is the focus of this video. And then there are tools and these tools we can give it so that it can execute the task at hand by using these external tools. So let's jump into the agent builder here. I can go back to this agent and on the bottom right, I'm actually gonna open it up in the agent builder. So there's a couple of things in this uh, agent builder. The first is the model. So what's the language model that is going to power your agent? Going back to this diagram here, this is the LLM part, okay? In this case, we're using GPT-4 Omni. And so this is the same um, model that's powering ChatGPT here, but we can also use other models like Claude from Anthropic and so on and so forth. So we choose the model. The model is really important because you need to use the most up-to-date ones, uh, because if you don't, they're not very good at figuring out which tools to use and it doesn't follow the instructions as well. So this is a really important part. Now, uh, the system instructions is the most important. So this is what we're gonna jump into in just a second. Before we do that, the other aspect here is tools. So we can add tools to an agent and it can then figure out which tools it needs to use. So in this one, I've given it a couple of different ones here. So you saw it use the YouTube transcript extractor. So this tool, all it does in particular is take a URL uh, from YouTube and then turns it into a transcript. And you can see this in our tool builder. If I open the tool on its own, it has an input, which is the URL. And if I was to run this, I would just get the transcript. And in this case, you have the input, the URL. We have a block here, which is again, all done with no code. We simply just drag and drop the block onto the uh, tool builder and use it. And then we have the output and we get the transcript. So it's got access to this tool, but it also has other tools like transcribe. So let's say, for example, I didn't use the YouTube video and actually I wanted to upload a file, which was an audio or a video file. We would need to transcribe that file to get the text first. In the same instance, maybe there is a blog post which has a transcript on it. 
And in that case, I want to scrape that uh, blog post so I can use a web scraper tool. But in order for the agent to know how to use these tools, what really matters is this prompt and the system instructions. So let's go to the formula. The formula is rock TikTok. Now I tried for ages to come up with an acronym that was easy to remember, but also actually followed something that was valuable. And to be honest, that was a really difficult task. So this is the best that I could come up with. And rock TikTok kind of has a little ring to it. I quite like it. Rock TikTok is the best AI agent prompt and hopefully you will remember it. So let's go through each of the letters to see what they stand for. So when we're building this AI agent prompt, we need to give it a role. The role kind of defines what the agent is. It gives it that function. It's like the expertise. Think of it like you're building an agent where you hire someone and give them a job title. In this case, I am using a content repurposing uh, agent. And so it's really, I'm, uh, the purpose of this is an expert copywriter. So if I go over to my prompt here, you can see that the role I've given is expert copywriter. Now you could be more creative. You could make this a bit um, more descriptive, but it works for the moment. The reason why we give a role is so that the agent knows what kind of traits or personalities to assume. The second is the objective. So we need to clearly state the overall objective or goal, what you basically want the agent to achieve or to solve. So this is the kind of the guiding star, the North Star for all of the tasks that are at hand. Again, in this particular case, I've given it an objective of assist the user to repurpose long form content into blog posts, LinkedIn posts and Twitter threads. So that's not a ton of information. So I might want to give some more context. And that's where the C comes in, additional context. We want to provide additional context and relevant background. So in this case, I'm saying you are an expert copywriter who works for a marketer. The marketer will provide you with some form of content that you must help them transform into blog posts, LinkedIn posts and Twitter threads. The user may provide you different formats. So going back to, is it a URL from a YouTube video or is it an audio or video file? And you must help guide them through which tools to use. You do not help with any topics that are not directly related and so on and so forth. So I'm just giving it additional context so it knows exactly what's its role, what's the objective and what's the context. Now, so far, a lot of these principles you can actually use in traditional prompting with ChatGPT. People often overdo this because you can kind of go back and forth and, and, and train it as you have a conversation. But in agents, you kind of want to have all this information upfront and done in the system instructions before you start working with the agent. Now, the next part of Rock Talk is the T. So T is tools, which is a list of the tools that are going to be used and the expected inputs and the outputs. Now, technically speaking, when you add these tools down here, um, what we're doing behind the scenes is we, we actually tell the language model what tools there are, and we do this in code. So there, are, there is some information that is being sent over. For example, if I go to my tool builder, um, when we go to the uh, name and the description, we have a YouTube transcript extractor, but we also are sending the description, extract YouTube transcripts from URL. In the same way, we also send them the inputs that we're expecting. This is a YouTube URL, and we also then give it a description. It's very, very important when you're building AI agents to make sure that these descriptions are accurate and as complete as you can possibly get. I can't stress this enough. If you don't have good names for your tools and the descriptions aren't good enough, the agent is highly likely to do the wrong thing. This is one of the most important things to do is get the title and description of your tool right and the names of the inputs and the descriptions to be as accurate as possible. However, I've also included this information in uh, the prompt itself. So technically speaking, this information behind the scenes, the agent has, but we might want to give it some more information and exactly how we want to use it. So we might reiterate the input is X and the output is expected in this formula. And so we're doing that so that the agent knows exactly what inputs to send these tools when it uses them. So the next letter is T again, but this now stands for tasks. So as we know, agents are goal orientated. So we start off with a high level objective, but that can be then broken down into tasks. So if the overall objective is to transform long form content into LinkedIn posts, there may be multiple steps we need to go through. So just think about when you perform a task, what are the step-by-step -step things you need to go through? It's a bit like a SOP, standard operating process. In this case, the subtask might be get the long form content, ask about the context behind it, then transform that into a LinkedIn post, then ask for edits and make some edits. Those might be some very simple subtasks. 
if I go back over to my agent builder, you can see that the subtasks here are to obtain a source piece of content, then generate an outline for a blog post, then generate a title, then generate the first draft of the blog post, and then to generate LinkedIn posts and Twitter threads. Now, if you remember in the conversation, I actually went straight to ask for a LinkedIn post. I didn't actually generate a blog post. So although there may be multiple tasks, we actually need to give some operating guidelines as to how to approach those tasks and what is okay and what is not. Maybe I want to make sure that someone doesn't go to the LinkedIn post and they always start with a blog post. If that's the case, I really need to explain that in the next letter, which is operating guidelines. The operating guidelines is basically like giving more details on each one of those individual tasks. For example, if you're going to collect the information like the long form content, are you going to ask that from the user? Or do you use something to go and search the internet? You might want to explain whether you're asking the user for something or whether the agent should actually use tools to solve that particular subtask. So the operating guidelines are really, really important. If I go over to the agent builder here, I'm given some guidelines on each section. So in the first one, there is obtaining source content. So before we can go by repurposing that into LinkedIn posts and Twitter threads, uh, what I really need to do is make sure that whatever the format I was given, it's turned into text. So if I was given a website URL, then we're going to use the web scraper tool. If it was a YouTube URL, then we'd use the YouTube transcript extractor tool. And if we get an audio or video file, then we use the transcribe tool. So they do different things. So I'm basically giving instructions on how to execute the subtask. And then finally, we have the C which stands for constraints. So this can be anything from things like topics you would not like the agent to talk about. In this particular example, if we're talking about generating content, then maybe we don't want the agent to talk about political affairs. So we might have that as an off topic thing that it can't talk about. The constraints can also be things like formatting. So when we use a tool and get the output from it, the agent needs to know how to use the output. In one of the tools that I used there, there was a tool that created five LinkedIn posts. Now what we need to communicate to the agent is how should you use that output? Should you summarize it? Should you output every one? Should you just output one post at a time until the user asks you for more? These are the kind of constraints that we might want to add. So to summarize, building extremely great prompts for AI agents is rock T talk. Role, objective, context, tools, tasks, operating guidelines, and constraints. So now you know my secret formula to building powerful AI agents. And if you want me to do more videos uh, demonstrating building other types of agents, just drop a message in the comments below and tell me what kind of agent would you like me to build and do a video on. And if you're not already subscribed, smash that subscribe button and give this a like and share with your friends. Thanks very much. Ciao, ciao.